We went from 2 million people being vaccinated at the moment I was sworn in to 210 million Americans being fully vaccinated today. We created 6 million new jobs, more jobs in one year than any time before. Unemployment dropped, the unemployment rate dropped to 3.9 percent. Child poverty dropped by nearly 40 percent, the biggest drop ever in American history. New business applications grew by 30 percent, the biggest increase ever. And for the first time in a long time, this country's working people actually got a raise. Joining us now is Democratic Representative Katie Porter of California. She's a member of the House Oversight Committee and the Deputy Chair of the House Progressive Caucus, and she has the whiteboard with her tonight. <laughs> Representative Porter, we heard President Biden yesterday uh, reciting at the beginning of his press conference the accomplishments of his first year in office achieved with the Democrats in Congress. Are people out there experiencing effects of those accomplishments that they might not necessarily realize come from the work uh, that you, the Democrats in Congress, did with the president and achieved legislatively this year? Absolutely. And I think it's important to remember where we were one year ago when President Biden was sworn in. Families were struggling to put food on the table. We were still continuing to have a lot of job losses. Um, you know, many schools were closed. We are in a much, much better situation today. In fact, where our economy is today is quite remarkable. Um, and we now have, in fact, the fastest growing economy in this country that we've had in decades. So the American Rescue Plan, which Congress passed um, into law very quickly upon President Biden's election, actually has resulted in really fast economic growth. So the United States today is experiencing about 5.5% growth in GDP. Now, when you compare this to our other nations, the seven, the G7, the seven most advanced economies in the world, our global competitors, none of them are even yet having positive GDP growth, a measure of our economy. Um, we're seeing the same story with unemployment. Unemployment today is down to 3.9% unemployment. And to remind everybody, the last time we had a major financial crisis in this country following the, the Great Recession and the bank crisis, it took 10 years to get unemployment back down. We've hit this 3.9% unemployment number two years faster than if we had not elected President Biden and we had not passed the American Rescue Plan. And most directly, most immediately for families, they have more money to spend each month. The average American family has 354 more dollars each month accounting for inflation. So even taking, a, taking into account the global disruption in the supply chain, the fact that some big corporations are price gouging consumers, even adjusting for inflation, the average American has an extra $354 a month. And I'll tell you, that money makes a real difference to American families. Let me just go over that last point. Uh, that is a new number to me. You're saying that the actual disposable income of Americans has increased during this period of inflation, where we think of inflation as eating away at people's actual spendable income. Absolutely. This is disposable income in real dollar change. So accounting for inflation, adjusting for the fact that prices on some things have gone up, the typical American, the average American is, has 354 more dollars each month. This is a big number. This is a lot of people's car payments. This is a lot of people's after school payments for their kids. This is several trips to the grocery store, even for me with three hungry kids. So this is real money in Americans' pockets, and it's directly a result of the economic agenda and the American Rescue Plan directly addressing the needs of American families. What do you hope to accomplish, given possibly some of the limitations imposed by Joe Manchin, uh, but what do you hope to accomplish in the second year uh, working with the president legislatively? Yeah, look, the problems that we have the fastest growing economy we've had in a long time. We just went over that. GDP's up, unemployment's down, more money in families' pockets. But even with these positive economic changes, the reality is there are still problems. There are still structural problems in our economy that we need to solve. And this is a really cool whiteboard because it reverses. Um, 
I want to talk about what the costs are of not acting, what the cost is of having Joe Manchin or others block action in the Senate. For example, if we do not pass legislation to allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices, we are losing $8 billion a year. This is what it costs taxpayers because Medicare cannot negotiate drug prices. We have to pass this legislation to get this done. This is a problem even in the strongest economy because essentially we allow drug companies to hold American taxpayers hostage. Similar, on climate, if we do not pass meaningful legislation to address climate change, we are spending right now $145 billion a year cleaning up and dealing with the consequences of climate-related disasters, wildfires, floods. $145 billion, this price tag, the price tag of not acting, makes the cost of passing this legislation look cheap. And this one is my favorite. One trillion dollars. This is the cost of not fully funding the IRS. And so if we, and per year, this is the lost money. So if we would do these things, if we would take action, bring down the cost of prescription drugs, $8 billion a year savings, take action to address climate change, $145 billion in savings, fully fund our IRS, so that everyone pays what they already owe. This isn't making any changes to the tax code. It's just making sure we let the IRS collect the taxes that are already owed and doing. These are the costs of not acting. So when we hear people say the bill would cost this much, legislation would cost that much, I think it's really, really important that the American people understand what President Biden is trying to do, what Congress is trying to do with these kinds of changes is actually save money. That's what's on the table for year two. And it's really important that we take these actions now when we do have a strong economy. And that's what President Biden has set us up to do in year two. You know, I, as you mentioned it, I have not heard Joe Manchin and his concerns about inflation ever mention uh, prescription drug prices as part of the inflation burden. No, but it's absolutely true. Prescription drug prices, child care costs, these are some of the fastest growing, er elder care, these are some of the fastest growing areas of expense. So when you talk to families, even as they're having more income, there are some of these prices and some of these costs that are going up and we need to address them. And the time to do it is now when we have low unemployment, when we have big GDP growth, um, this is the time to begin to address these structural problems. And there's just, again, the price tag of legislating gets so much attention. What doesn't get enough attention is the price tag of not acting. Representative Katie Porter, thank you very much for being bringing a clarity to this subject that I could never achieve myself, and uh, I don't know who else to turn to for it. Thank you very much for delivering that for us tonight. Thank you.